You know, Max uh, outlined in his piece that teachers at the Education Center are claiming that Lebanese officials sometimes ask for documents, formal documents, that would prove that children had attended classes in Syria. Uh, Max points out that many families didn't think to take those papers with them, of course, understandably thinking that they would perhaps return after several months. I mean, earlier we heard reports of Syrians heading back into Syria, you know, a year ago and, and, and throughout because uh, life was just that much more difficult or as difficult in the refugee camps. I mean, why is that happening? Is there anything can be done? Because understandably, there is a burden on, on the entire, uh, you know, structure and, and civil society of Lebanon. Uh. Sally? Huh? Yeah, Max okay. or Sally. I mean, it seems like that's something that could be regulated or that's something, is that, do they simply have no choice, these teachers who are asking for these documents? Uh, well, I, I would say the main problem is not the documents, but the empty places. I mean, there's no empty capacity for the Syrian children to go in. And when there is, the documentation problem can be averted by doing a placement exam or something like that. Yeah, well, you know, obviously it seems like, uh, you know, there's so many different aspects when we talk about education or, or simply healthcare, so many different aspects of, of, of life that make it so grueling and difficult for these families. Max, uh, I'm sure you've seen this photo taken at the Yarmouk refugee camp in Damascus. Let me just scroll down. Really capturing uh, the scale of human suffering there amongst the Palestinians in the camp and others. I mean, the UN saying people have been reduced to eating animal feed. And since the photograph was taken, uh, you know, we've heard varying reports um, about aid being stopped uh, inside of Syria due to security concerns. Do you see any of that? Um, you know, are there similarities to be drawn with the refugee camps uh, in Lebanon and elsewhere? And, you know, are people, would, could you conceivably think of people heading back to Syria? Well, I mean, that photo and the scale of suffering within Syria is obviously just a completely different level than what we're seeing uh, in Lebanon. You know, I went up to Tripoli a couple of weeks ago and I, and I talked to somebody and did a story on a woman there uh, who's a lawyer in Syria. And, and she has brothers who were forced to go back to, to Syria because many uh, Syrians can't find work in Lebanon, um, they're especially in places like Tripoli, where the economy is already depressed. There's just there's no ability to absorb uh, the kind of extra labor that, that is flooded in. So so people do go back. Um, I, I think Sally's uh, family actually um, is still able to go back and forth. You know, Sally's uh, uh, Syrian, as, as are many of the people who are involved in aid groups here. So people do do that. Um, the suffering here is, is not of this kind of really mass quality that, that we see in Yarmouk and other places. Um, but, but it can be very intense uh, in some areas, families without money to, to feed themselves, without any ability to find work, and, and for the kids without anything to do. Uh, and, and as I said in the piece, a lot of them kind of end up taking uh, menial jobs because they're cheap labor, and, uh, and if they're not in school, they don't have anything else to do. Right. And I saw you note that in the piece. Usually it's, it's, it's the lowest of the low jobs. Well, for those of you wondering what this photo uh, is exactly, it's from the Associated Press. This is people queuing for aid at a UNRWA distribution point in the capital uh, of Syria on January 31st. The UN relief agencies distributed more than 7,000 food parcels in the Palestinian camp. It's home to 160,000 people. Max and Sally, I want to thank you uh, both for joining us.